Next up, carbon blocks. Dual universal blocks changed out annually is the rule of thumb. Universal meaning any block designed to be used on all common disinfectants, both chlorine and chloramines. But what is that council based on and when does it not apply? The number one reason that there's a carbon block or multiple on RODI systems is to remove disinfectants that oxidize or destroy the membrane prematurely. Secondarily, they also remove some pesticides, herbicides, disinfection byproducts, and volatile organic compounds or VOCs that can make it through the membrane. Simply put, a long list of chemicals that we don't want in our water. There's a reasonable chance that you don't have a ton of these chemicals in your water, but it's not the kind of thing that a reefer can test for, even with ICP. Just something that we treat for along with the disinfectants using carbon blocks. As to which carbon blocks, how many, and when to change them out, our approach is dependent on the disinfectant in your water. Chloramines, chlorine, or well water, which should have none. There are carbon blocks that are best for each instance. A vast majority of carbon blocks out there are designed just for chlorine. However, the better, more modern blocks are also capable of treating for chloramines. We refer to those updated carbon block technologies as universal blocks because the blocks designed for chloramines also work on both disinfectants. In fact, they work even better on chlorine than the blocks designed for chlorine do. Chloramines are just chlorine and ammonia combined together. And they were developed as a more desirable disinfectant because they're more stable and they maintain their disinfectant properties much longer, further down the pipes, while also creating fewer toxic disinfection byproducts. Because of that, half the nation's cities have now dropped chlorine in favor of chloramines. However, what makes chloramines more stable or better for these city uses also makes them much harder to remove for us. To give an example of how much harder, we tested one of the most widely trusted chlorine carbon blocks in the world, but on our water that has three parts per million chloramines. Net result is it didn't make it past our first testing point of 150 gallons before it already broke through our failure point and was passing through over 0.75 parts per million chlorine and rapidly got worse from there. In contrast to that, a universal carbon block that's specifically designed for both chlorine and much more stable chloramines lasted 20 times as long and hit over 3,000 gallons before we found its failure point. It does that because this type of carbon has sites that are capable of splitting that bond between the chlorine and ammonia, as well as simply longer contact time because there's just a lot more carbon in these types of blocks. There are two ways to find out which one your city uses, but to be frank, most reefers are just better off assuming that they have chloramines. The juice of investigating which one your city uses isn't worth the squeeze. The reason for that is more than half of the cities use chloramines, many switch back and forth seasonally, so relying on testing is sketchy, and more cities convert over to chloramines every year because it's easier to meet those increasingly strict EPA standards with chloramines than chlorine. However, if you are really confident that you have only chlorine, we'll show you how it can save you 10 to 20 bucks a year or so, and there's two ways to find out. One, check your city's water treatment website, email or call them, ask what they use or if they have plans in the works on changing from chlorine to chloramines. Doing this annually would be wise. Alternatively, test for them. Pick up a total and free chlorine test strip. We have them, but you can find them at most hardware stores as well. Total chlorine test strips reads the total of both chlorine and chloramines combined. Free chlorine test strip is just chlorine. So if the test strip reads free chlorine and total chlorine as the same level, that's a strong indication that your city uses chlorine and there's an opportunity to optimize, use cheaper blocks and save a few bucks. However, if the test strip reads significant amount of total chlorine, but much less near zero free chlorine, that means that you have chloramines. The explanation is that everything in that total that isn't free is chloramines. Knowing what your water is treated with allows us to optimize the filtration strategy. For half of us with simple chlorine, a single standard block change out annually is often adequate. This is specifically true if you have a smaller tank or produce less water at a time. Carbon block's ability to treat for chlorine deteriorates the longer that it's on or the larger your water bin, but then has the ability to recharge some of the capacity during downtime when the system's off. So if you have chlorine, only run the system for a handful of hours to make 10 or 20 gallons at a single time, a single standard carbon block is a reasonable solution. If you have a larger tank that goes through more water or you prefer to make large batches of water at a time, you have a few other options. Change out the carbon block more frequently, like every six months rather than 12. Switch to a higher performance universal block, which will have much higher capacity and performance, and then stick to those annual change outs, which is actually cheaper, or run dual carbon blocks. There is a reason that the dual carbon blocks are the best solution. It's because none of these carbon blocks are 100% efficient. They all let some disinfectant or contaminants through, specifically more the longer that they're running or the carbon block's capacity is depleted. Running dual blocks in series always has one catching the residual breakthrough. 
At the start, the second block is just performing a polish to get near zero. But by the end of the life cycle, the first one's likely letting 50 to 75% through and really just reducing the load on the second. This is why at the start of today's video, I suggested a five-stage RDI with dual blocks is the best solution for most reefers. That said, a lot of reefers already own four stages with only room for one block, but would like to go to dual blocks later. The easiest solution is not buy a new system, it's just add on a canister that can put before the system with a sediment filter. This allows the first two to be used as carbon blocks. The single universal dual standard blocks will cost 10 to $20 a year less in filter changes than those who have to filter for chloramines, which we'll share next. The filter replacement strategy for chloramines is still annually for most, but a bit different because the capacity of the filter on chloramines is tighter and a loose attempt at estimating the gallons produced is wise. In this case, redundant dual universal blocks change out every 5,000 gallons, which works out to about annually for most reefers. For reference, a 100 gallon tank that gets a gallon a day replaced from top off and 10% weekly water changes is just under 1,000 gallons of product water a year. However, those blocks filter out wastewater, which is often three to four times the product water. So a 100 gallon tank uses about 4,000 gallons of water a year to produce 1,000 gallons of tank water annually. However, if you have two to 300 gallon tank, changing the blocks every six months is likely a better move with chloramines. Do the math on what your rough evaporation and water change consumption is, multiply that by four to account for wastewater, and make an informed decision on when to change out the blocks. Why every 5,000 gallons or annually for an average size tank? Well, in our testing with a 12 hour on cycle, which is about 35 gallons of water, one block lasts approximately 3,000 gallons before we had more than 20% of the chloramines breaking through. Running series like this, leveraging that reducing effect where the second one only has to deal with a much lower concentration, we could probably get three to four times the capacity or nine to 12,000 gallons. However, 20% breakthrough is higher than many would like, and those generic rules of thumb need to have significant buffer to be useful to a wide audience. For instance, the performance would be lower for those who produce 50 gallons at a time, or run larger systems on larger cycles, or if they use faster than 75 gallon per day membranes, and the contact time with the carbon is less, or other considerations that go into a buffer. 5,000 gallons are annually for an average size tank, or every six months if your tank is bigger. For those who don't want to operate on rules of thumb and either want to make sure that they're not going past exhaustion or get as much useful life from the filter as possible, you can test when the blocks are depleted. Use one of those total chlorine test strips on your wastewater, which is water that's passed through the carbon blocks, but not through the membrane. Zero total chlorine is the best, but anything over 0.25, I'd certainly change it. If you do this, make sure to test at the end, just before your bin is full, which will give the best representation of performance. Now, the test strips may cost more than you save on the filters, so it's probably more about ideal performance than savings. So what about well water users? They don't have disinfectant in most cases, so in some ways this is easier. The challenge is well water isn't tested and regulated the same as city tap water. Kind of on the reefer to test for and filter appropriately. Not always, but home wells are often near areas of agriculture with fertilizers, pesticides, and herbicides. In that case, I'd make my own evaluation of the quality of the well water and use one to two of any block rated for VOCs or volatile organic compound removal, and this is going to be lower cost than the universal blocks. One thing to note about carbon blocks is they do not remove any meaningful amount of dissolved solids or TDS. A brand new one might actually even add TDS with those dusty finds, and part of why most RDI systems have flush kits. I suggest opening the flush kit for 10 to 20 minutes after a filter change. It's also possible some of the blocks can change the electrical charge of some of the contaminants, which can change the TDS reading. Keep in mind that a TDS meter isn't a direct measurement of TDS, just an estimate based on electrical charge. It's the membrane and DI resin that pulls out the TDS. DI resin is next. There's a one-size-fits-all, coupled with the nuance to various Reaper optimized solutions here too.